Hello everybody, welcome back for another video, hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. Some very interesting news has appeared. The trustee of defunct Bitcoin exchange known as Magic the Gathering Online Exchange has again extended the deadline for submitting and approving the rehabilitation plan to repay users. According to a translated statement, which appeared yesterday, Nobuyaki Kobayashi, Mount Gox's trustee in charge of the rehabilitation process, says the new submission deadline is now the 28th of October of this year. The previous cutoff point was scheduled for Friday of this week, but Kobayashi acknowledged that the volume and complexity of user claims meant such a time frame was insufficient. He said a large number of rehabilitation claims that the rehabilitation trustee fully or partially disapproved remains under determined for being subject to claim assessment procedures and quote they said accordingly it is not possible at this moment to make appropriate provisions in a rehabilitation plan on modifications of the rights of the rehabilitation claims repayment methods and appropriate measures for the undetermined rehabilitation claims and therefore to submit a rehabilitation plan by the 26th of april pretty much they don't have time they have to extend it the saga of reuniting mount gox investors with funds Lost in the exchange's 2014 hack has become a five-year ordeal. As Bitcoin is reported, slow legal proceedings com combined with attempts to hijack the payout process by certain creditors has caused multiple delays to dividing up the surviving stash of 141,000 Bitcoin and 142,000 Bitcoin cash. So the point is, I'll give you a little run-through for those who have no idea what's going on. 2014, there was uh, the, the, you know how like, Coinbase and Binance are kind of like the main or like the head honchos that we have right now in the cryptocurrency space. In 2014, it was just Mt. Gox. This was actually a website that was acquired by, I think, three people. It was like one person who bought it, they sold it, another person bought it and sold it. And there was a guy who uh, purchased it. And apparently he did not understand that he should not have everyone's funds on one computer. Apparently, hackers realized this very, very quick that all the money was on there. And they started a spree. I, I think there were multiple hacks. And apparently, according to the legend, uh, he knew that the hacks were happening. And he assumed that they would kind of stop. This is what I've read. This is what I've heard over the years. And apparently, at one point, kind of a huge portion of it was gone. They unplugged all the computers, so and so and so. Um, to kind of fast forward a little bit, a lot of people, you know, the people who lost their money, they found a, a huge portion of it. And these people now have claims to say, in 2014, I was on the exchange. My money got stolen. It was lost. Where's my money? Where's our money? Can we have our money back? They apparently have been trying to figure out how to divide this money up for people to come forward and say, hey, this is my password. This is my username. This was my so-and-so-and-so. I do have a claim to this actual website. I do have X amount of Bitcoin that were actually on this thing. Part of the problem that we have, if you want to even move forward a bit further, is that uh, 141,000 Bitcoin, uh, that's an enormous amount of Bitcoin. As the market has fallen down in 2018, the idea has been, and this is where it gets really interesting, is that the giving back of 141,000 Bitcoin to, I think it's a couple hundred, a couple thousand people who have claims to this money right here, is that logically, if you had been without, let's say you invested in corn in 2014, and then you found that that corn was worth around $5,000 per piece of corn. And then somebody was like, I'm going to give you back 10,000 pieces of corn. You would probably sell that corn whenever it got back to you. Not to use corn. Maybe I'm just hungry. The point is, uh, it's the idea that in 2018, we assumed that this would be relatively over. We had news a couple weeks ago that by this point, it would kind of all be over. People would start receiving their Bitcoin back. But the problem is, is that because of the lack of sufficient liquidity and price in the Bitcoin market, that giving back thousands of people 141,000 Bitcoin, which they could potentially sell off as it is, it is currently... 726 million US dollars. If the price of Bitcoin were to go back to 20,000, that'd be uh, $2.8 billion. And uh, having a sell-off of potentially, we don't know, $2.8 billion back into the market could be detrimental for the price of Bitcoin. And as we all know, when Bitcoin falls, the rest of the market uh, tends to also follow suit. So the very interesting thing is, after all of this, we now know that apparently the new submission deadline is now the 28th of October, which means typically this, this, this process takes anywhere from around three, four to five months, which means these people won't be receiving their Bitcoin back until 2020, which is, I mean, it's not the greatest news for them. However, the idea is, is that 
the Bitcoin market is assumed or people are assuming that as the Bitcoin reward is going to be, <coughs> we're not assuming that part. We know that the Bitcoin reward is going to be cut in half in 2020. It is believed or assumed that as we move closer to 2020, the Bitcoin price will react accordingly and start to go up. If the price goes up, more people go into the market. If more people go into the market, the price continues to go up. It's expected. People are assuming, these are what the analysts are saying, that by the end of this year or sometime in 2020, we could have a situation where Bitcoin is back over $50,000 and as more or people see that the price is, continues to rise. We can then have a Bitcoin price over a trillion dollar market cap and more people start pushing their money into Bitcoin as they also want to make gains as well, which is good for us because if we have a situation where the prices are going back up, this may deter people from selling off this portion of 141,000 Bitcoin back onto the market, or potentially if some of them do decide to sell off, it'll not be as big of a blow as it would be right now in the current Bitcoin price. That kind of is everything. That's, that's kind of the entire explanation. Here's the actual announcement translated into English, as I assume most people do not uh, speak Japanese fluently. Here's the actual translated document. Uh, and that's pretty much the craziest news that we have right now. It's kind of the fact that a lot of people were very afraid that this was going to happen very soon. This was actually a thing in 2018. A lot of people were discussing this as well. This was a very big topic. People were saying... If the market has not sufficiently recovered by uh, this date when everything was supposed to have happened on the 26th of April, uh, what would happen to the Bitcoin market? My opinion, I kind of feel like behind the scenes, if you had been paying attention, there were a lot of very large names in the cryptocurrency space who kind of came forward uh, talking about, uh, what was that uh, guy? He said he wanted to like relaunch Mt. Gox. <laughs> Please don't like there's no need for another Mt. Gox, regardless of how much security you can provide to it. Just move on with your life. Uh, but there are a lot of people who are trying to, I think, deter the actual release of these coins back to the people who have claims for them. So what I think is happening now, and once again, this is just my opinion. I have not been in the room. I do not know these people. I assume that there were some discussions and it pretty much came down to the fact that regardless of what it may say right here is that a couple of people were like, you can't release these coins right now. You cannot give them back to these people. Uh, have there been any issues with people submitting deadlines or submitting so-and-so? And so have there been any problems? Well, that's fine. Just give them an extra couple of months. Everything is lining up. You, I uh, hopefully you understand what I mean. I don't mean any type of manipulation. It's more like give the market time to recover before you give back 141,000 Bitcoin to people who are probably going to sell them off. Because I will be 3,000% honest with you. If I had a situation where I had not been doing well economically over the past five years and somebody gave me 5,000 Bitcoin back, I'd probably sell at least 80% of them and move to an island somewhere. The point is, uh, this is very, very big. Uh, let's see exactly how this unfolds. As of now, it is the end of October, not like today's date, but like the actual submission deadline, not even when people will get their stuff, it's like to be able to submit a claim and people will probably not start getting their money back until 2020 and hopefully, gigantic, hopefully written in the sky, uh, Bitcoin will have recovered a lot by that point. Um, I hope you all enjoyed. I hope that this is good news to all of you. We have a, a, not a bit more of a lifeline. It's more like, I think this would have been very bad for the price of Bitcoin. Hopefully, oh, I mean, the, the, based on the, 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 the SEC and the CFTC, hopefully by this point, Bact has launched, NASDAQ has launched, Fidelity has completely launched, Eris X has completely launched. We have at least two uh, physical Bitcoin futures floating around there. And maybe even if the the uh, the the highest in the SEC have allowed it, uh, maybe a potential Bitcoin ETF. Um, anyway, hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all are having a great day, morning, afternoon, and or evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. Hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening. And yeah, I'll talk to you all soon. See you.